This is a Piece of the Attraction podcast with leading dating and attraction expert for men, Kezia Noble. Gloves off conversations, exchanges, debates and confessions that dish up the insights and serve the solutions. Now over to the lady herself. Welcome to a Piece of the Attraction podcast. For over a decade, my team and I have been helping men from across the globe enhance their lifestyles, improve their attraction skills, and maximize their confidence and potential in order to be their best and most authentic selves. The content here is unfiltered, and hopefully in this over-filtered era we all currently inhabit, our straight-talking advice, our honest confessions and insights will cut through all the niceties and serve to help you action better choices. This is a Piece of the Attraction podcast. Remember, you can find and download all the episodes on Stitcher, Overcast, Spotify and iTunes. Today on a Piece of the Attraction podcast, we have two coaches from my team joining us. Hadassa and Mark J. They both specialize in the subject and are brimming with advice. Hello, guys. Hi. Welcome, welcome. Um, right, let's, let's get started. Uh, most common sticking points that men come to us with, there's yep. three. The first is approach anxiety. Yep. Second is sexual escalation. So that's taking it from a platonic interaction to something more flirtatious and sexual. Uh, and the other one is running out of things to say. I mean, this is the big one. 99%. But it's so big, I just want to go into it in a little bit more detail, okay? Mm -hmm. Why it's so big. So first thing I do with my students is I, if they come to me and say, I have approach anxiety, which 99% of them do, I say to them, imagine I have a crystal ball. And this crystal ball always tells the truth. You must have faith in the crystal ball. And you see that woman over there, you're going to go talk to her. What does the crystal ball says? The crystal ball says, you're going to have an amazing interaction. Will you go and speak to her? They say, yes. If the crystal ball is right and it says we're going to have an amazing interaction, I will go and speak to her. Mm -hmm. Ah, but what the crystal ball didn't say is that you're going to get a number. Just so you have an amazing interaction. Which proves that it's the fear of running out of things to say that's fueling the approach anxiety. Because if it was just approach anxiety, they'd say, oh, hold on. Would I get a number? after this great interaction. They never ask that question. Just if it's a great interaction, I have nothing to fear. So that's why I believe that conversation skills are the very thing that you need to nail if you want to um, overcome approach anxiety. Would you agree? I'd say it's, it's so important because, well, for one thing, it's the thing that you're gonna be doing with the person for the vast majority of your time together, whether it be on the street or on a date or wherever, you are going to be talking to the person. Yep, there's physical stuff, obviously, you have to be good at escalating, etc. But it's gonna be talking to someone, so yeah, if you, if you don't know what to say, you're gonna run out, yeah, it's gonna make you really nervous. But specifically, it's that transition point, isn't it? That's all. It, it's, it's a really common one, it's, yeah. It's the opening line to having a full-blown conversation. Mm -hmm. It's that transition point in between those two. Because once you're having yeah. a conversation, I always say to my students, you know, you're now, um, you're in the friend zone. You're not friends locked. You're only friends locked if you don't sexually escalate. And we can talk about that later. But you want to get into that friend zone where you have her full undivided attention really, really quickly. Because the truth is most guys can do that in the right place in the right time. Very rarely do we get a student who can't talk to anybody ever mm. at any point. It does happen. Most of the time, friends, family, right place, right time, they but can have a really... cold approach to yeah. the transition. That's it, very difficult. Absolutely. So all I'm telling them, and I say my dad is the same, is, is just to be able to get to that point where you are speaking like you're speaking with your best friends or whatever, someone you're really comfortable with. It's that's, just... that's the big point I always think. So the reason why there's always this distance people have is they go and they go, oh, I don't know what to say to her next. I don't know what to say next. To say next mm -hmm. yeah. It's because there's, they've put a distance there, say, that's a stranger. So there's certain things I can't talk about. Mm -hmm. So what they have to do is actively bridge that gap by acting familiar. Absolutely. By acting as though, I would rather, I actually someone said to the students, I want the girl to turn around and say, sorry, do I know you? Yeah. Because I would rather that, because at least he said that, that sort of familiarity. I, I'll give you an example. I was working on um, uh, a project a couple of months ago. Met this girl on it and 
just by the way that we've been interacting, by the second day, somebody else came over and said, oh, you guys must be old friends. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I met her yesterday. But it's because you just assume that familiarity. You go straight in with, I'm going to set this frame as, you know, we've already met, we know each other, we're comfortable with each other. I mean, I know that you're not technically because you don't know them. But as we said in, in previous podcasts, if you don't sort of set the vibe as it's comfortable already, you're going to have to build to it very slowly, which is going to take a long, what long do we time. What with people that we know? We make jokes, we mm -hmm. challenge them, we give our opinions, we make assumptions about them. We, we, you know, with your best friend, you could still go, oh, I bet you'd love this movie yep. because yep, yep, you're yep, using yep. information that you have. But people don't be seem. Oh, I, I can't make an assumption about someone I don't know. Things like um, the future. So if your if you if your friend hasn't, I don't know, ever had a Thai green curry, you'd say something like, "Oh, we'll have one another time." You know what I mean? Oh, we'll, I'll, I'll make you one next month. You think, I can't do that. I, I don't even know the person. You guess you can. So it's assume. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about assuming. Yeah. And you don't have to be right. You don't always make an assumption that's mm. correct with your friends. No. So you don't need to make an assumption that's correct with a complete stranger. No, you're not bothered whether you're right or wrong because it doesn't matter. You know, when I started the Seven Day Mastery program, I mean, you two were there. This is back in, God, 2009 or some <laughs> bullshit think. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Another oh. lifetime. Yeah. And um, I used to structure it in a way which was the first two days, this would feel like the natural progression, which would be the first two days they were with you and the approach anxiety kind of trainers that focus on that. We'd get rid of their approach anxiety. And then day three, it was like, okay, now we'll work on conversation skills. Mm. But what would happen is by day three, the approach anxiety would come back that you worked so hard to get rid of because they suddenly were saying, I don't want to say next. Yeah. So yeah. now what we do for a long time is we teach conversation skills and helping them yeah. overcome the physical reaction to approach anxiety. Yeah. It still work synonymously. Because they work with you on day one where yes. you help them with conversation skills and with Mark J. Mm -hmm to help them overcome the actual sensation, the physical reaction to approaching and getting used to it. So let's start from the very top. Um, I sit down with the students and I do my crystal ball and that always strikes a chord because then they realize it's not the approach anxiety, it's, it's the conversation skills that they're lacking in. But I always say to them, what are your three main selling points? Well, what are your three attributes? Now, most of them, they, they come with a list of sticking points, yeah. but attributes, they're scratching their head no idea. They might say something like, oh, I'm pretty hard working. I'm like, come on. I'm kind of funny. Yeah, I'm kind of, kind of funny. They're Sometimes. not committed to it. Yeah. I'm like, but you're the product, okay? And the conversation skills are the marketing vehicle, mm -hmm. okay? We're not here to change you. You will change as a result of your success, but it will be a natural progression of your success. We're not going to make a, an introvert into an extrovert. But... You have to understand what your product is. And then what we do is we say, right, here's the marketing campaign in order for you to convey those three attributes. That's the first thing that they have to do. So I'll give you an example. We'll have one guy and he'll say, okay, a big part of who I am is traveling. I love to travel, but how on earth can I get that into a conversation within the five, first five minutes? Unless she asks me, I'm like, this is so easy. This yeah. is so, they think it's hard, but it's so easy because you say to her, either where you're from, if she has an accent and she says, I'm from Spain. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? I love traveling, but I've never been there. Or I love traveling. That's my, I'd say fourth favorite place mm -hmm. out of everywhere I've been to. So you can slip it in so easily. Or oh, travels are it's perfect. But they it? don't see it like that. They say, yeah. oh, but unless she asks me, yeah. do I like traveling or what do you like doing? Mm. I won't be able to volunteer that information. And that's the same with most of their, their uh, passions or interests. If they like poetry or whatever, or theatre or whatever, like, I'm not going to just be able to just get there. It's going to have to be the conversation about that already. But you're absolutely right. There's always a way. You can navigate it to where you want it to go. When you're a yeah. master conversationist, first of all, you have no approach anxiety because you know I will be able to connect. I'll be able to have a solid interaction. I'll make impact with that person. I don't care what they give me. Because sometimes, you know, the girls will volunteer really, really dull responses. They feel very dull, the responses, and you yeah. think, oh, I can't capitalise on it. But if you're a master conversationist, any information that they give you, you can capitalise on. So even if she's not from another country, then they go, oh, what if she's not from another country? How then would I get in the, the fact that I like travelling? Simple, then you say to her, have you got anywhere planned this summer, yeah. this winter? Are you going anywhere nice? Or you've got a bit of a tan, have you been somewhere? I love traveling, but I've never been there. So you, yeah. so you, 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 
Or you even could... going from other things, you know, if you, if you happen to be talking about food, when you've had food in another country, art, a museum you went to, there's a thousand ways that you can You can drop can it in anyway, you can say if an yeah. anecdote about something that's completely irrelevant, say, well, when I was in Italy... Yeah, even the weather. This, yeah. It's freezing today, God, I wish I was I just back got back in. from Italy. Yeah. So the weather's crazy for me today. But then you can say, I love travelling, and but you don't just go, I love travelling, silence. No, you say, <laughs> I love travelling, but you know what, Italy... Uh, it wasn't so good or it was amazing whatever yeah. it is i always say you love it or hate it use st- extremes because that makes people latch on if you go oh, it was okay unless it's curiosity yeah, yeah. we'll talk about conversation yeah. clickbait later mm. let's talk about pattern breaking how much of this is about pattern breaking Com- having strong impactful conversation skills i i've seen a lot of people use pattern breaking using different dating different dating coaches using it um and i've often seen it being overdone mm. i think it's something that should be only used sparingly to Example. switch just to switch the conversation around um so changing the subject randomly in the conversation go oh look at that over there did you see that when she was talking about something or noticing something about her when she was speaking um giving your opinion that she wouldn't expect like you're going along suddenly mm-hmm. go actually you know what I hate that thing. Yeah. And just making things turn and switch so the, the mood and the vibe changes in the conversation. I don't think it should be used too much. Otherwise, it starts to feel like a one-man show mm. and it stops being a dialogue, which is what conversation has to be. It's got to be involving both people. Well, there's two key principles of game, which is pattern breaking, the first one, and the ability to flip a negative into a positive. Um, If you don't pattern break, the problem is is she's going to go in autopilot mode. So I always give the example of where you're from. And if you take uh, uh, someone from Ireland, Mm -hmm. they always get the same response. 99% of the time, if they say I'm from Ireland, the person will say, I love the Irish. And they think, oh, aren't I funny? I love the Irish. And they they, they say immediately, like, "Uh," and they smile politely. Mm -hmm. But they've heard it so many times. But if you just used a different... Uh, response that broke that autopilot mode which is breaking the pattern and just said you know what I've never been there tell me two things that make it an incredible place to visit from there you would have built up two more conversation threads and you can latch onto those you can go onto those ones yeah I think you're absolutely right and I, I think um, Hadassah has a really good point in that if it's done purposely too often it can stand out I think when it should be done naturally is when you're just giving your real opinion yeah. I think guys are very they want to agree with everything, be happy about everything, be positive about nice everything. Nice guy territory. Absolutely. So I think you you naturally pattern break. When she says something that, you know, if she likes Harry Potter and you don't, you go, oh my God. But they don't. They What they this do is, the is a nice guy game. Oh, that's great. Nice oh. guy game method is I'm going to slip in under the radar. Literally, you know, I'm just going to be nice. I'm going to agree with everything. I'm going to smile. I'm not going to be too uh, extreme in my opinions. Yeah. Opinions should always be exaggerated, I think. In the yeah. early stages, in the early stages absolutely. Yes. absolutely. Because once you get to know somebody, I feel like it's a little bit like a difference between stage acting and screen acting. Stage mm. acting, you, oh, well, you, you could have really, so yeah, can... really big movements so that people right at the back can see them. Yeah, right, absolutely. When you get to know someone, it's a little bit more like screen acting where you can notice subtle. subtle changes in people's eyes and things and you don't need to do these exaggerated yeah. um, opinions, exaggerated movements. People will pick them up. Yeah, but early stages, you've got to um, grab her interest. You've got to grab her curiosity. And it is And you have to collect it. information, which is why I always use tell me two things. I use it. That is, I love stock and trade lines for beginners. Mm-hmm. If you have a fear of talking to people, if you have weak conversation skills or you have weak conversation skills when you're feeling so, so unsure, and, you know, you get what we call decision-making paralysis. Mm-hmm. So that's the point where... She says something, and you know that if you're in a relaxed state, that you just be able to, you know, spin off that and, and have a, a good conversation. But right. when you're in that state, you're like, my mind's just fucking blank. Like, I cannot think, and I'm just going to say something nice and, and stay safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you say to her, if you use a stock and trade line, that's a safety net. And eventually you won't need stock and trade lines. Eventually you will just be comfortable talking to people and being that fantastic, you know, vibrant person that you really are. But in the early stages, having those stock and trade lines are so important. Because guys come to us and they go, I don't want stock and trade lines. I want to be organic and natural and freestyle. So how's that going for you? Because you can't be freestyle and organic and natural if you're so stressed out 
that you can't relax and you can't come up with that witty question or that witty reply. Yeah, I think sometimes just being able to use some of those ones more effectively is a good test anyway. I still use them. Yeah, you might I go say, to parties and you sit there and she like rolls eyes going, not this fucking question yeah, again, Kezia. You know, but it's on fresh ears, yeah. so it has that impact. That's it. Like you might say to someone, you know, tell me something about you that not many people know. Or something like that. You know what I mean? It's a very, very simple one. And you could get a total range of examples because people might go, oh, God, I don't know. Or I'm not going to tell keep you. It, I, I make it a lot more specific. I think if you say to someone, tell me about yourself, they go blank. Well, this is my point. They go so, completely blank. So by itself, it is, it's very vanilla. It's not going to, you're going to get a range. But as a test, you can use that and then kind of um, give more detail. Tell me something. I bet this or my one so is you put this the or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. But assumptions are huge. We're going to talk about assumptions yeah, later. Yeah. They, are, they are massive. Mm. But going back to this, so collecting information is extremely important. So if you say huge. someone, where you're from, let's go back to Ireland. Mm -hmm. Where you're from, they say Ireland. And you've never been there and you don't have maybe much interest in it. What most guys will then do is they will change the conversation like a pinball and, machine yeah bing, and bing. they will say right that question i didn't get the answer i wanted mm -hmm. uh let's try another lifeline uh, so you know what do you do yeah. and she says i work in a shoe shop okay uh let's try another question oh, and okay. what happens is the girl has already made her decision she's already blocked you out mentally put up a block but if you say, okay, Ireland, that's what I got to go with. There's nothing I can do. Don't ask what part of Ireland, because she'll say Dublin, or she'll say a country, or she'll say a city in Ireland, and it, it becomes, it makes, we'll talk about this later, the, the caliber of the hook even weaker. Mm -hmm. If you just say Ireland, right, okay, don't know anything about that, but tell me two things that are incredible about Ireland. And then she says, oh, you know, the food and, I don't know, the history. Just those two things. You've now got two new conversation topics. Well, I would also That's do. That's what you've got. Within just one question, you have generated two new conversation um, topics. I, I totally agree. I'll, I'll put a caveat on that one, though. For day game, I don't know if you would agree with this, sometimes I would add my own details um, to the question. Because I think... Depending on who you're talking to, you know, if someone's really relaxed or whatever, tell me two great things about Ireland, you might get a really good answer. However, if they're on the street a bit flustered with bags of shopping, yeah. they might be like, oh God, I don't know. Yeah. So what I will often do is ask that kind of question and then maybe give one as an example. Start the process what myself. You so, you know, um, tell me two really great things about Ireland. I can imagine, you know, it might be like this. Or I can oh, because you get the ball rolling. E.G. Yeah. Nice. E.G. Exactly. E.G., right, exactly. <laughs> nice. it was, I don't know, but I've heard blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So then she really just has to confirm or deny that one yeah. and then give another one. So it sort of just says, oh, I already know how to play this game a little bit so I can do, rather than, oh, I've got to come up with everything. I always find You're if setting someone's the tone. nervous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Very good as well. If someone's a bit nervous, I think making somebody think a bit less, I know it's going to sound like a very odd thing to do on the street particularly, making people stress a bit less, Think a bit less. At least in the early stages. Yeah. I think as the conversation becomes more natural and she seems to be more involved, I think then you can get her to invest a little bit more thought and Absolutely. time. But the early stages, I would agree, you need to make it as comfortable and natural as possible for her. And particularly depending on where you are. Like if I was in a you know, nice bar, VIP area or something, it would be completely different because you're having a drink, you know, you can use those silences, they're fine. So or if in a coffee yeah. shop and you sit down at the same table, I think when you've got that yeah. time set out, you know that someone's going to be drinking their coffee, they're not going to be leaving, they've got their laptop out. Exactly, but so you don't have to in fill in the street, in the hurry, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. What about uh, Hadassah, you always complained, you were studying Japanese for some yeah. time, and it was, it was not just the language, you were studying the culture and the history. And that's quite interesting. It sounds like it should be interesting, but people would literally dull such an interesting subject. I would actually start saying that I did different subjects because I was so sick of yes, asked, but we being all asked the same question. I don't tell people what I do anymore because they just ask me the same generic question. They're in their head and they think, oh, she's got an interesting job, so I don't really have to do much work now. Oh, Japan, that's an interesting mm. subject. I can just you know, rest on my laurels and just let the conversation carry. But, um, I let the let the uh, let the subject just carry. It doesn't work like that. You've got to put effort into it. You've yeah. got to invest. So, what do people used to say to you every time they say, "What do you do?" And you say, "I'm studying Japanese." What made you do that? Oh, it's, it's generic. But it's not rude. It's just generic. And she's been asked it a million times, so many times that she's actually lied now about what she does. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. you just think, "I need another conversation. I can't have that all the mm -hmm. time." What would you have liked them to ask you? I actually would. I didn't really want anything specific. Um, I would have happened if someone opinionated turned around and said, 
you know, Japanese are not that useful anymore. Why don't you do Chinese? I would have rather that. Yeah, right. A right, challenge yeah. with that. Or, you know, um, the thing, what, tell me three things that make Japan the most fascinating country because it was really hard for me to narrow or that down. validate you. You know what, Japan, oh, most girls won't pick that. Most girls would pick that they're going to learn French or German or something like that. That's really cool that you pick Japanese. And then validation and then... Tell me, tell me like two reasons. I'm really curious why you chose Japanese. And that is just, it's such a small shift yeah, right. from autopilot mode. It's a hairline shift, but it makes such a tremendous amount of difference because you have to remember, you need to get her full focus very quickly. Very, very quickly. You need to be her number one priority. You also need to just put yourself in her shoes. You know, if you're looking at your, your own job, what question do you get asked about your own job all the time that you don't mm. want to be asked? So then put the shoes on the foot. If you were going to be asked something, what would, it like? what would you like? And then return it to her. Yep. Talking of jobs, I mean, that's a big one now we're on that. So yeah. we've talked about where you're from. And just to go back, because I didn't finish off uh, this thought, but when you, someone says to you that, well, let's take Japan. Two things about Japan that make it incredible. What would you say? I'm going to give an example here. I love the literature, the literature. Uh, both modern and uh, medieval. Yeah. And I love the uh, history, particularly from 1868. Okay, so she's heavily into history and the literature. Okay, two things. that I mean, History I'm a little bit into, but literature I'm not. So it's not that I would dismiss that at all. I would keep that for later, but I'd go with history like, oh, so you like historical things. Well, have you ever been to, I don't know, Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. have you, that's got a lot of his, history in it, something like that. And she might yeah. say, no, I've never, never been there. And then you can talk about that a little bit. Have you been to Rome? Travel, suddenly. Rome's full yeah. of history. And now we're back on travel. You've got <laughs> yeah, your travel wanted. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. so that's what you do. So you don't say, well, I'm going to talk about Japan for the next hour because I know nothing about it. Oh, I've been there. I could have used that. But that, I like to like make it a little bit more difficult for myself. That's, that's a big issue people have. They think, I don't know about that topic, so I can't do it. Which is nonsense. You don't have to know anything. You just have to either be inquisitive about it, enthusiastic about it. We all had to try and force ourselves to have conversations about the topics we don't really know much about. I had, yeah, I had like a conversation about quantum about. physics with someone. No, the once. last one, I, last thing I want to talk about is is Japanese literature. No offense to anyone from Japan. I've been to Japan. Great okay. place, but I'm not interested in their literature or this period of history, the specific period of history. That I don't even know about my own damn history, you know, let alone Japan's history. So most people just go, you know, brain freeze, yeah. don't know what to do here. Yeah. But I will use it as a way to springboard onto a subject which is connected to it. So history, okay, sod that, can't speak about that. But I like, you know, history from ancient Rome. And I really do, I find it, or I like Tudor history. Anything, I'd latch onto that so I can give data back. I'm exchanging data here. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, let's talk about something completely yeah, different because Japan is totally out of my jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. You should always, again, bring it back to yourself a little bit because it is important to have this back and data. forth. Yeah, if it was Japanese culture, it's very specific over there. So it could be something from our culture or a culture that you've seen somewhere else. It doesn't have to be this specific one. Well, it can it's be just... something that you heard once. You know, yeah, I heard exactly. this. It can be a load of nonsense, which you're not really sure if it's true. You read about it somewhere in a Christmas cracker. But you, you know yeah, no, it's exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be great. All in one line. But well, you know, that's exactly, this is my Christmas crackers. Yeah, but that's exactly the whole what I was Japanese saying history in one Christmas cracker. Almost like a scroll that comes down. But you know, it's exactly, it's exactly what we said before, though. You're, you're, you're making it's medieval Japanese. You're saying, I reckon this. What do you think? You know, you're obviously an expert on this. What do you think about it? You know. It's, it's much better than just uh, random <laughs> cracker questions. <laughs> Merry Christmas here, ancient Japanese scroll. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so we were talking about jobs a little bit. Yeah. I want to talk about this a bit more. This is very important because that's going to come up. I hate it when dating coaches say, don't ask about your, her job. Like, what the Rubbish. fuck are you talking about? Don't, don't ask about, about someone's job. I know. In the real world. Yeah, yeah, talk about everything apart from that person's job. Mm, that's because they weird. don't spend like 12 hours a day doing it. And it might be their vocation and they're absolutely in love with it. Jobs are 12 hours a day jobs? Can be. Can be. Can be longer. Nine till five? Can be longer. Uh, average. Average eight, eight, but... Six till ten at night? Yeah. I've got it streamlined down to a good two hours a day. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Semi-retired, yeah, no, bitches. Love it. I'm just love it. Um, okay, so with the job, when you ask someone their job, never, ever respond with, this is my, my worst, is how did you get into that? That is like so vague. How did you get into that? Mm -hmm. Fuck you. <laughs> and the other one is, 
Uh, how long have you been doing it for? Irrelevant. Doesn't matter if you've been doing it for 100 years or two years. Well, 100 years would be weird. Uh, the third one is where do you work? Who cares? Where do you work or, or who do you work what for? Company? Yeah, what company? I've never made you in the same field. And the other one is do you ever. like it because you're going to get the standard reply. Yep. Yeah, it's right. Yep. Everyone says, yep, like my job. Um, so the best things to come back with for the job, um, well, if you want to share any, I've, I've got quite a few. Mine is the same for whether it's a job, hobby, whatever it is, is to delve a little bit into maybe what it's like or what you need to be good at it, what I think. Yeah, that's the one I use. What do you need in order to be amazing at what you do? Like the top yeah. if, if, in your... In your in your job, what do you need? What um, attributes do you need? Yeah, so if exactly. they say that I'm a teacher, again, so exchange patient. information and say, I'd be so awful. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I always, always give like, bring it back to you. I'd be the worst. Like, if someone goes, I work in finance a bit, I'd be absolutely hopeless, you know, straight yeah, away. And then you exactly. ask them the question. So this is important. I know out there we're getting very like geeky, technical. This is like <laughs> micro detail, but this is what you need if you want to really nail this because if you're going to listen to a dating coach that says just be yourself and ask interesting questions and be thought provoking, it's not going to help you in your hour of need. Believe me, you need all this stuff. Mm. Um, you need a literal roadmap of where to go yeah. next. And it's really important what I just said because for me, the ab absolute number one most important thing in conversation skills is knowing yourself. Yeah, really, well, that's, really that's well. marketing yourself. How can you Absolutely. market your most important product, which is yourself, if you have no idea? But people don't. They think, and I'm sure people watching this go, well, I know myself. It's my life. I know what I'm doing. But can you articulate? When was the last time you spoke in real de detail about why you listen to the music you listen to? When was the first time you heard it? Why did you go to travelling? Why did you do this? So many, so many details that people don't have ready. So it's like half of your battle is missing. So when you've found this amazing piece of information about this person, of course you don't have anything there because you never thought about it. It's very factual. It's very simple the way that men think about it. You know, why do I play golf? It's fun. Why do I go That's running? Reflection. It's healthy. Yeah, exactly. A bit of introspection, self-reflection so that you know the why, the how, you know, what, what made you do these things so that when you've decided, oh, that she is a waitress and she may have to be incredibly patient to do that job or whatever, and or finance, and you think, oh, I wouldn't be able to do that. Well, the reason I know I wouldn't be able to do that is because I know my own job very well. And I know my own hobbies very well so that I have those things completely ready so that whatever you pick... I'll have 10 different options of things that I have a similar feeling or a similar emotion based on that we can then bond over. But if you don't have that ready, you, you literally can't. So, guys, stay away from um, what everyone else is asking mm -hmm. when it comes to her job, okay? Don't be dismissive of it. And when I say dismiss, dismissive, don't change the subject. That's what it means. Yeah. Don't, in fact, like back where she's from, what her interests are, never change the subject because it's not the answer that you wanted. That's your answer. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. That's your answer. So um, going back to the job, if she tells you, uh, well, it doesn't really matter what she says. You, you can, rather than say, is that something you've always wanted to do? Because you're, you're opening the possibility of getting a very precocious answer, like, no, I want to be a fairy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, okay, this is a well, ridiculous yeah. question. This is a ridiculous yeah, conversation. Sure. So if you turn around and say something like, I read, and this is bullshit, but it's a really good little fact, I read in a magazine it said that um, women know what they want to do at 14. And men know what they really want to do about 44. They always laugh at that. And then what they do is they think back what they want to do at 14. Yeah. So you are having a multi-dimensional conversation straight away. You're not talking about just the present. You're talking about the past also. I've got a similar one to that. So it's um, if someone's doing something very high-powered, lawyer, finance, something like that, I always say, is that something you, you wanted to do or something your family pressured you into doing? Mm. Or alternatively, if someone's doing something very artistic... I always say, did you have to rebel at all to do that? That's a nice one. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you look back at your days, you remember going, choosing degrees and stuff. Yeah. You know, you had a lot of people go, oh, my parents really want me to do medicine. My parents really you're want me to do science. You're showing empathy. You're empathetic. You're, yeah. you're, you're showing an understanding of familiarity. Yeah, it's an empathy in the fact that it's something we all have this shared past of, like, choosing subjects. We've and all having, been there. Yeah. We've all had that choice. So and we've all rebelled at some there's point. There's a connection to, instantly. Yeah. That you're both in the same boat about something. But do you know how many people are frightened of doing that? Yeah, a lot. They go, oh, that's impolite. Can't say that. Can't presume that someone was rebelled against their parents. God forbid. But usually people somebody... will answer back with, actually, no, my family were really supportive or yeah. a little bit, but I had my heart set on it. And they open up. You suddenly get mm -hmm. this reveal about got, their soul. You've got their full attention. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful when you get it right. 
People, when you put somebody into that right state, they'll tell you everything. They'll give you the whole life story, whether you ask for it or not. Oh, no, I Because people want to talk. I know. I can get people to open up just like that. Yeah. And they go, I can't believe I'm telling you all this stuff, Katia. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's that master accidental, conversation. It sounds like that accidental <laughs> feeling that people get very occasionally on dates or nightclubs or stuff where you have that feeling like, I can't believe I'm telling you this. I feel like I've known you. Mm. You can have that every time. What it's, sorcery is this? It's, it's yeah. you just... <laughs> you just need to open the gateway of certain subjects. That's but it's what you do is you show familiarity. I've noticed yeah. that. It's you show really empathy. important. Oh, I act like they're, my, they're best friends. Yeah. So important. It's, I've it's, been through something like that too. It's that kind of... No, I just understand. You know, it's like a bit like this. Use examples. Yeah. Even if I saw it in a movie and I'm like, oh, just pretend that I know all about it because I'm an expert. Yeah. Or it's really funny. You're like, no, yeah. I, that, like I said before, that feeling of, God, yeah, I know exactly what you mean is a real bond between two connection people really connection yeah. people open up straight away that familiarity and feeling like that this other person even in some way understands how you think about that understands how you feel about that has thought about it rather than just asking question after question it's really important it, that goes back to what we speak about a lot, which is stop looking for commonalities because they're probably not going to be there. Find the connection. Mm. So if you say, if you, she says, I'm from Spain, I'm studying Japanese and I work in a shoe shop, you're like, well, that's three things I have not nothing in common with. Then you've already dismissed that person. But if you're like, no, 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 that's just she stuff that she's chosen to do. Finish. Let's connect. What, you know, why did you make those decisions? Mm. How do you feel about things? Um, I want to stick on the jobs one because this is really important. Sure. Uh, the third thing that you can ask a girl is, does your job put a smile on your face every morning? Mm -hmm. It's specific. And they will give you a specific detailed answer. So if you ask a, a vague question, you're going to get a vague answer. If it's specific, she will say back to you, you know, I was smiling every morning when I went to work and I got that bitch of a boss. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, you know what? I've just been promoted. So it's that extra information, that detail that she wouldn't ask. But yeah. more importantly, guys, what do you say about your job? Now, this is really important because guys will either oversell their job yeah. or they will underplay it. So they'll either say, yeah, I've got the best job in the world. I work in a bank. You know, or something like that. And they really, really oversell it. Like, I love my job. And the girl's just like, this is a mm. really weird um, artificial conversation. Or they'll say, oh, I, um, I work in a bank and their shoulders go up, hunched up, and they look apologetic for their very existence. I work in a bank, I'm not sure. I, 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 I kind do. of work yeah. in a bank, like a yeah. lawyer thing. You know, and, and they're not committed to it. And then yeah. that just says, well, you're obviously unhappy. But not just I'm unhappy, you, you seem like somebody who does not stand by your choice as a man. And that is what women are trying to ascertain. This is really, really important here, okay? Yeah. If you love your job, fine. I would say it's a very small percentage of I've people I've met about that... three people in my life who said they do their what? job for free. Yeah, they're usually charity workers or actors, something in the art where, you know, they find that there's great beauty in poverty and they like living, you know, like a bum right. for their art. You know, you've got that, those small, that small percentage. And then you've got the majority of people who do their job for fucking money, mm -hmm. okay? They like their job, they don't love it. It damn well isn't the job that they wanted to ever be in, okay? So you gotta be careful with those questions then. No, 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 listen, so if a girl says, what do you do, and you say, I work in IT. Yeah. Rather than spruce it up and have the artificial weird conversation or go, oh, I'm in IT and I'm pathetic and I'm un unhappy, say the truth. If she says, well, how do you feel about it? Say, you know what? I don't really like it that much. And she, ah, why do you do it? Well, I do it because, and then you talk about your passion. Right. Why are you doing it? Are you investing in property? That could be your passion. Are you just a big spender? Do you like nice, new, shiny things? Right. Do you like traveling? Whatever it is, yeah. every, the majority of, peop, of people are doing a job for money so it can pay for their lifestyle or something or an investment. And that's a real conversation, and it's unapologetic, unapologetic. honesty. That's the unapologetic, unapologetic honesty. Yeah. So I had a guy, and you know who this is. He's the regular student that I can't say the name, obviously, but he work, He has a job which is considered by most to be a really shit job. He's working like yeah. in a storeroom, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a supermarket. And um, every time a girl asked him, you know, what do you do? He, he could not even try and spruce up this job. He just couldn't. It yeah. was just a shirt job. So I says, sat down with him and I said, why do you do this job? Just tell me the truth. And he's like, because I'm not ambitious and I'm sick of telling people that I'm ambitious when I'm not. 
I do this job because it pays for me and, and what I like. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to think about it. Yeah. And I see everyone else caught up in this rat race and I laugh at them. I look at them thinking, look at you, trying to make that extra bit of money for what? I said, how profound. Why the fuck are you not saying this to women? And as soon as he started being unapologetic and real and saying, I do this job because I'm not ambitious. I don't give a fuck what other people are doing. I love my life as it is. Yeah. And I stand by my choices as a man. Women became more attractive just by being unapologetic. Unapologetic honest. honesty, I think, covers everything. Absolutely. <laughs> I know. Everything. Simple, like, you know. Everything. Everything you're interested in. How many times have you had uh, students who go, oh, I'm so embarrassed because I like video games? Yeah. And I'm like, so okay, it's one of the biggest industry. Yeah. He's now like, just, yeah. Or well, anything <laughs> like, they think is a, is a mood killer, even if it's like, you know, I've, I don't want to tell people I've got um, my child or whatever. It's like, no, I, I, I earn my money because I love spoiling my kid you know what I mean I love you know um, putting putting food into my family's mouth it's great it's amazing but be honest because men always think I've got to look ambitious that, that's what women like well hold on no it's an attribute yeah. of some sort some women are going to say I like ambitious men and I think sometimes they're not it can be attractive I, I get how it's, it can be attractive but it's not, it's not only the attraction it. formula as such women are trying to ascertain is this a man that sticks by his decisions so if a man says, look, I'm not ambitious. I like my life as it is. I love it. And I, I spend my money on this. I love traveling. This is my passion. Yeah. You know, are you with me or not with me? It's kind of like are that. Are you living your true self? Are you so living your true self? Again, it's so, it's really Women can fun. see through it. I, I've so been out with very ambitious men and it's all kind of very yeah, of blase. And then you can feel there's this need of validation. You so get it's it. not... With people trying to be on mm. the, the kind of the constant entrepreneur, you get it a lot. Oh, you know, God, I'm starting fuck. this business, I'm doing this thing. Can we thing. talk about entrepreneurs? Can we take a time yeah, out yeah, for yeah. a second? Sorry, yeah. Non-entrepreneurs. Non-entrepreneurs. <laughs> non <-entrepreneurs. laughs> I like, that's, I like Have that. Have you noticed there's this new epidemic? It's no, a no, no, fucking... this is it. No, no, let me finish. This is, this is my show. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, <I guess. laughs> it is my show. Okay, so there's a plague, I've called it, like an epidemic. Let's, right. not, let's not go overboard. And it's people who do talks, and they're people who say, I quit my job and I become an entrepreneur. And they go, okay, so what are you doing now? I'm teaching other people to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck is going? The world has spun off its axis. I don't have a company that's successful, but I'm going to make you successful. How can successful. you teach someone to be an entrepreneur? I hate it when people no, no. say I'm an entrepreneur. But in the by past, the way. people would go, I know about this topic, so I'm going to have a business, you know, selling this item that's produced or, you know, delivering this service that I know a lot about. But what do you have now? You've got, I'm an entrepreneur. In what? Because I quit um, my job and now I'm, I'm jobless. I don't know. Uh, light bulbs? Do you know anything about light bulbs? It's nothing. They're not even selling that. anything tangible. They're sending They're entrepreneurs that, that one. Yeah, it's just, I'm an entrepreneur. Idea. In what? Yeah. <laughs> in what? Because uh, you don't have a passion uh, anymore. It's multi Multi-layering marketing. I would rather someone turn around and say, yeah. you know what? I like books. I'm going to sell them. That'd I like second hand vinyl fashion. records. That's yeah. the I'm going to sell them. That's the old-fashioned entrepreneur. It was someone that was good at shower something. Shower curtains. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like a nail shower. Coat hangers. <laughs> no, but... But think about it, uh, the old fashioned entrepreneur was someone that was good at something and he's like, you know what, I can make money from this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now people go, I quit my job. And then they go, I'm now an entrepreneur. I'm not an entrepreneur. <laughs> I've checked in in, in Starbucks having a meeting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I, are you having a meeting about? Yeah. Having a meeting about having a meeting and checking in. If my Instagram grows enough, somehow a company will come to me and give me some cash because it happened to you someone can be else. In Starbucks with everybody else. Yeah. Hashtag living the dream. Hashtag uh, office of the day. What fucking Starbucks? I mean, you don't have an office. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like every other student. My office closes at 10. No, Nomad. Yeah. Was it? No <laughs> Nomadic <you>. office. <laughs> Homeless. Nomadic office. Uh. <laughs> anyway, sorry, we're really going off track, but I just hate Please. it when people go, I'm an entrepreneur. Like, get the fuck out of my face now. Yeah, no, gross. I don't want to say, oh, I'm a business owner. That's different. Fine. You've Fine. got a business. What does it do? Well, let's hope it does something. It has a real, but yeah, it's a business. <laughs> you know, I'm an entrepreneur. Days, when people used to say, you, you mean you're not anything? Who the original entrepreneur was, and the Americans won't know who we're talking about here, but Del Boy, and yeah, people used to yeah, laugh yeah. at him. I sell He goes, stuff. I'm an entrepreneur. You know, at least it? he was getting he goods was and going stuff. down the market and selling but things. he was selling shit. He had a thing to sell, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think it's- Walking it's parodies. It. It's being- Everyone wants to be Del Boy now. Unapologetic, and it's, it's, I think those people, right, they find it very difficult to be unapologetic because they don't know what they are. You can't, you well, can't. You're it back in, good. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll you don't. Like, it's very, it's very difficult to be confident and unapologetic about what you do. If you yeah. don't really know what it is, 
you're, you're sort of figuring it out. It's like, well, if you don't know what it is, why should I? I, I always stand by the fact that I, I was bullied a little bit at school. And by the time I got to 11, I was like, I can't be bothered trying to fit in anymore. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I could do was just go, I, I am myself. Mm -hmm. I, I am I remember that yeah. shift for you. I 11 remember. 11 years old, all my, like half my school went to my secondary school. So it was like, I didn't really get a new fresh start. I was like, okay, just gonna just accept it. I'm different. I stand out. I'm not gonna like what everyone else likes because it's boring as hell. Start off with Spice Girls. Do you remember that? Yeah. Because that. everybody wanted to be Baby Spice or Ginger Spice. Uh, Hadassah wanted to be Scary Spice. And they used to go, you can't be scary spice. No one wants to be scary spice. Or the, what's the other one? The, the one who's dressed like a jogger. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sporty spice. Oh, That's a question. Yeah. Do you feel now that because you figured that out actually earlier than yeah. most people do, yeah. that it's a great advantage? Oh, massively. Because most people don't figure that out till they're in the 1820s. No one could pick on me. After yeah. that, when they made jokes about me, they were laughing with me. So you were stronger yeah. earlier than most people? Yeah. Hadassah became untouchable. Mm. I really was. If you, it, I think it happened. <laughs> Imagine I dress up as Michael Jackson at school in front of everybody and didn't care. That was just weird. Okay. <laughs> you deserve to be bullied. Yeah. I wasn't bullied. <laughs> yeah, Everyone, I kept out that, of you no, for that one. I kept that nickname, <laughs> Little Miss Jackson, right until I left school at eighteen. You were called Little Miss Jackson. I don't remember that one because you weren't at school oh, with me. Jackson. Oh yes. <laughs> mm. Okay, right. We're going off subject here. Um, but in men, can I make a last point? No, no, I've got, I've got more points about the job also here. But just in that last one. Mm -hmm. In men, I think that manifests in being good at stuff. You know what I mean? Men, when they're young particularly, they've got to be good at everything. Boys, when they're teenagers or whatever, they've got to be great when you ask the question, are you good at that? Yeah, I'm good at that. You know, it's, it's very cool to be like good at things, successful at things. When you get a bit older, you realise that being good at stuff is who cares? It's being confident about or being and owning it. If you're terrible about it, but you own it, that, that's way kind of more attractive. Saying, oh, I'm a terrible dancer, but we'll have some fun. Or when no, I'm rubbish at bowling, let's put up those things on the side and we'll have a great time rather than, yeah, no, I'm great at it. No, but you, you, you figure out. That became quite popular in the mid nineties of the lad culture, yeah, by absolutely. the way, that unapologetic kind of like, I'm a slob. If you don't like mm. it, get lost. And I, I've done a lot of research into this. Mm. It's about... now gone on to women a lot more now, I've noticed. Really? Yeah, women being a lot more like, this is unapologetically me, I can be slobby like men and stuff, and mm -hmm. it's the Ledette kind of thing. I haven't noticed that. Yeah, I've noticed it. Oh, it's not been spoken about. My eyes off the ball than that um, one. Mm. So clearly as it was with men, but it women is... Women saying I can be like a slob now. <laughs> Yeah, watch yeah. watch TV shows and stuff. But they now, the way that women whole thing are... where they weren't shaving under their arms. Well, it's the idea of uh, did, uh, the being traditionally feminine is like, well, I'll do, well, I can do it. And women I can, can be talk feminine about things wherever I want, as vulgar right. as men. Oh, can. I'm completely yeah. vulgar. Yeah. Well, I've been like that since very young. I've I've always been very vulgar. Potty mouth, they Still call it. Back to the jobs. Um, I find that talking about your work is a great opportunity uh, opportunity to use something called conversational clickbait. So if another uh, time a girl says to you, do you like your job? I love it and I hate it. Mm -hmm. That's strong. Yeah. They always, always question that. You can say that about the country you're from. Oh, you know, That's do you like, you know, do you like coming from wherever? Yeah, I love it. It's like London. I love London and I hate it. Oh, sure. and, no, I <laughs> no, you don't. Have you seen? Um, no, but you say, I love it and I hate it. And then people immediately want to know what you love and what you hate, especially what you hate. Yeah. They love that one. So you can say that about anything. I love it and I hate it. Another one that you can say is, you know what? It's the second best job I'd like to do. Ah, what's the first? Conversational clickbait. Mm -hmm. It's sneaky and it's highly effective. Yep. So again... It's about breaking patterns and saying the unexpected. Talking of the unexpected um, and going back to stock and trade lines a little bit, preparing for the unexpected. So we've spoken about it's all unexpected and that's what people are worried about. People are talking to people they don't know and they think, fuck, I hope she doesn't say that she's from this Eastern European country I've never heard of. Yeah. The satellite country. Mm -hmm. Um and then she does. Or they're saying, I hope she doesn't say that she's doing, you know, she works in this this line of work. Because, I know nothing about yeah. yeah. So the stock yeah. and trade lines are very useful for that. But the stock and trade lines are crucial for the unexpected when it's a negative unexpected. Mm -hmm. Such as, and I've given this example before, you're making eye contact with a girl. You're looking at her. And she's like, what are you looking at? Right. So remember I said 
the two main principles of game are pattern breaking and being able to flip a negative into a positive. This is where it really, this is where the two meet. And now. particularly that one, because now your sexual so kind of going, confidence is being tested. So she's what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Most guys will neutralize. They will oh, neutralize okay. and say, no, nothing. I thought you were someone else. Yeah. But someone with game will capitalize because you'll have the stock and trade line, which is to go over to her and look into her eyes and say, I'm really, really sorry, but I couldn't stop staring at your incredibly sexy shoelaces. Where did you get them from? Immediately, she laughs. Yeah. Pattern broken. Pattern broken. Yeah. Her whole perception of you and the situation has changed. You cannot, you can be a witty person. If you can come up with that, like, you know, Ali, who is on the team, he's extremely good at this. He's just fantastic. Um, but if you're not that person, having that go-to line can completely switch the situation around. And if you don't, the... <sighs> Being, having the sort of a good stock and trade or a funny thing is really good. But if for some reason you go blank, it, that really is, was just testing your sexual confidence. You know, you're looking at me. Do you deserve to look at me? Are you okay looking at me? Are you confident looking at me? If you're not, of course you're going to say, oh, no, nothing. I was just... But if you are and you have nothing else to say, I was looking at you because you look amazing. If you have just nothing else... Just that beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Because, because it's... Because it's true. <laughs> You know what I mean? I'm not as scared to say it to you because that's what, what the truth was. Now, obviously, if you do have something funny like what you said before, it's great because it's a really nice conversational kind of piece and it's funny and everything. But if you have to, like, just own it. Yeah. It's, it comes back to it. Deep Unapologetically breath, own, own it. it. There's some other ones um, that I've got here. So what, is, what, is, what, does, what do you say if she says, I've got a, go I've got a boyfriend? Mm. I say, I've got a goldfish. Anyway, as you were saying. It, yeah, it <laughs> depends. It's, it's a bunch of funny ones. Um, Ali's got the best. Remember when we were sitting on. around? This is ages ago. It was oh, after yeah. a boot camp. Oh. And Ali, he has the best comeback lines. But he can think of them like that because he's been doing this he's for so long. Yeah. Non-stop. Um, so <laughs> we were all saying stuff like, uh, I'm a lesbian. And he'd go... You don't need to turn me on any more than I'm already turned on. Something like that. I'd be like, fuck, how do you come up with that so quickly? So I had one, which was like, uh, sorry, I've got... <laughs> this is really bad. Can I say it? it would be offensive if I said it. I've got AIDS or something. You're like, what if a woman said to you, sorry, I've got AIDS? And he's like, me crazy. too, baby. Let's not wear condoms and have a lot of fun. Yeah. But, he yeah. Came, but the point is, is that he came up with that mm. within seconds because he's been doing this so much. He's like, well, he's like so prepared. And this is it. I think have, being prepared can be really, really helpful for beginners, especially. I think, and but you know, and it's the same for this one as well. It really depends where you are. In a sort of more fun kind of environment, you really do need to have a few of those kind of to bust out because they're really well, fun. Comedians they're really do simple. it with hecklers. Yeah, So if exactly. you see, like, I always like this uh, example of Russell Brand. Have you seen it on YouTube where I a heckler? Him last night. Oh, did you? So it's um, where a heckler gets involved and he's just not giving up this heckler yeah. and he makes him part of his act he brings him up on the stage or something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. so he, that's called capitalizing that's not yeah. just silencing that's capitalizing on it that's very powerful and he, yeah we don't know maybe it was spare of the moment and he is he's got that kind of brain because he's been in that position so many times mm -hmm. but it could have been something which is if this happens i already know what to do yeah and it's, whether it's contrived or it's natural, it still had the same effect. We'll never know. I think, for me, it depends where you are in the interaction. If it's near the beginning, I'd probably go for that because you go for broke, you know what I mean? You've got to be something strong, so something funny, yeah. yeah. But if you've had a great interaction, a boyfriend hasn't come up and you think, well, mm. you can go the other way, which is just the, the honest way, which is to be really super confident about it. A little bit cheeky, you're going to justify it and you say, look, it's going to sound really naughty to say this, but how's it going? You know, something like that, and just find out what the situation is. Because if you're the if you're happy with your boyfriend, you have a good relationship. I'm not kind of the person that we're trying to get in the way with that. But if it's new and it's not something that's cool, then you know we're both young. We should grab a coffee. So you can just go for broke, and you're never going to see the person again. You might as well find out what the situation is. Again, you're you're being a little bit cheeky, saying, "I know what you're saying, but what's what's the situation?" Because I'm going to go anyway if you don't have that line, do you know what I mean? So if you have a stock and trade, bust it out, why not? And you can funny. keep perfecting them and come up with new, we come up with new ones all this the time. This is it, this is it, it's kind of, again, it comes back to the same thing. You're, you're, you're owning it by either going, I'm just gonna say this because I think it's funny, 
or I'm going to say this because I want to know the situation and yeah. I can, I'm, I'm happy to deal with it either, either way. Or I can use this because it's tried and tested a thousand yeah. times before and worked. Yeah, absolutely. So, mm. but with those ones though, I will say to people, when you try and be funny, you need to have something to back it up. If it's not your way normally, if you're a funny person and the way you deliver oh, it, the yeah. way you say it, yeah, then, then you're going to be fine because you're just going to be able to bust it out really well. If it's not your temperament and you try something funny and you might not deliver it perfectly, you've got to have something kind of real in the can afterwards for when she goes, what? Mm -hmm. And doesn't give you anything back. Because so you, You've actually the created a safety net under the safety net. This, you, you, the double uh, yeah. safety net. Absolutely, absolutely. And same with whenever you try humour. Even if you deliver humour really well, it can fall flat on its face with the stranger. So you've yeah. got to have something ready to go, do you know what, never mind, and then move on with something real and normal and strong. Because... Keep it genuine as much as you can, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. Because if humour works, done. It's brilliant. You're, you're in. Ice broken. If it doesn't, and you were relying on that, it's very similar to routines that people did. If your routine doesn't work, for, for those people, it's over. Whereas if, you're, if your thing doesn't work, and you just move on to something else, then you're fine. So if you're going to do them, make sure you've got something you no, that's a good point. underneath it. You know Very what I mean? good. Pete, for instance, um, I've said this story before, but he approached a really beautiful Russian. He was totally punching above his weight. And um, he, he said, um, yeah, because he's, he's very nicely lending us his apartment for these for most of these uh, podcasts. So we should be a little bit more respectful. But no, he'll, like, he'll, he'll be glad I shared this story, actually. And she said to him, fuck off. Now, even Ali would be like, oh, what the fuck do I say to that? Yeah. And you know, he turned around, he qualified her. Because mm -hmm. that's how you do it. I'm going to do a whole episode on bitchy women, a completely different episode. So I don't want to go down, the, down this road too much. But he said, perfect. I love girls like you. I hate nice girls. I've been speaking to nice girls all day, all night. It's so boring. And then they laugh. This girl laughed. Oh, yeah. Standard line he uses, Pete. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, because, it's standard. If she because, says fuck off, I know what to do next because it works. Yeah, but because Pete but is he's, not yeah, but faced he's got by that. it at all. And so it, it absolutely works He's for got him. that confidence to yeah. put it on before. So I know what you mean, but I, I, I would say that if you've got nothing else, what it, I always say to guys, like, if you don't use that line, which mm. is qualifying them and saying, I like girls like you, what other line can you use? They usually go, well, there's nothing really you can use apart from neutralize or get aggressive. Mm. But why? It's so, the best way to go. Yeah. It's the only the way to go. The worst she'll say is like, please just go away. That's the worst thing that she can say to you after that. Yeah. And you, you've you've oh, got yeah, your I also like to remind attack. guys that when women put up a bit shield, and often go, oh, if she does that, I'm in, uh, instantly lost interest because I don't like girls like that. I think that's fair enough, but a shield is a shield. It's not a huge indicator of someone's personality within five seconds yeah. that of it's... getting to know somebody. And you need to, you know, persevere. Yeah. Find yeah. out what she's really like. And you've got to remember that that shield is not a shield for you. It's a shield that has come up because of a hundred other idiots. It's not directed at you. It's yeah. directed at everybody because I've had this situation so many times. So all you're doing is demonstrating that I'm not one of the ones that made you put the shield up mm. and they're back to normal. Actually, I, I was going to ask you a question. Yeah. We were talking about jobs before. Very common one we get, I'm sure you've had this a hundred times, is guys with very cool jobs, generically, firemen, doctors, that kind of stuff, who are really embarrassed to say it because they're like, I feel like she's just going to judge me on the job itself. The job. Yeah, you know, I don't want to say I'm, I'm a fireman. Right. Pilots. Right. Now, well, I would always say, again, own it. But what do you think? Capitalise on everything materials. that you've got. Yeah. Anything you've got. So a beautiful woman should go around with her face covered so that no one can look at her because, you know, it's like... It might. I don't know. Why would they not do it? I, I, I think because some guys think that. I don't get they that. They think that. More than themselves. I remember the fireman job. guy that we had. Yeah, we've had a few people like pilots, and they think they're okay. just going to think it's the same. They're going to. I mean. Oh, are they worried they're going to get used for uh, a festival? Yeah, sometimes. Okay, yeah. okay. So here's my answer to that. So when I go on a date with a guy, okay, I know what he wants. I'm not stupid. Okay, he hasn't invited me and spent all this money on a lovely date because he just wants to drop me off back home and never see me again. He wants to sleep with me that night. And I know that I am buying time for him to like me for more than just a, just a fucking shag, you know? Let's be honest here. So what am I meant to do? Say, I'm not gonna go on a date with a guy ever again, plus I'm gonna cover my face and my body so that he can fall in love with me, who I really am, eventually. Why would I do that? Why do I make it so much harder for myself? 
I can buy time. If I'm if I'm a good looking girl and a guy's taking me out on a date, I'm going to I'm going to buy time. I'm going to win him over with other attributes that I have, so that he can think, oh, okay, I want her for more than just a just a shag. So yeah, a woman is going to go out of a fireman, and she's going to have this whole big thing about, oh yeah. <laughs> it's just like if someone was hero looking, and all you're that. You're going to go out with them, and then you get to know is them, that, and know more. About let it buy it time. That's why I say to wealthy guys, they're like, oh, I don't want a woman to use me for my money. I'm like, yeah, well, maybe she's going on that date with you because she is looking for a sugar daddy. Let's let's be honest here. Sure. Buy time, okay? You've got. She's going on that date with you. She's not going on a date with that guy. So you've got the advantage already. Now, what you do with that opportunity, do you be like every other fucking stupid sugar daddy and just spend loads of money on her and, and don't build up any kind of connection with her and keep that as the same focus? Just like the good looking woman. Is she the one who's just going to say, I'm going to sit here and look really beautiful and keep taking selfies because that's all I got to offer? Because yes, then he's just going to want to shag her and nothing else. It's yeah. what you do with that opportunity. You're a rich guy, you're a fireman, you're a beautiful woman. Fantastic. You've been blessed. Now, use that opportunity for what it's worth. Everything you can get out of it. Don't fuck it up. How many beautiful girls have you seen and you think, shit, you're beautiful, but you're a total idiot and you're just taking selfies. So you're not capitalizing on the opportunity you've been given. Yeah. Same with the fireman. Yeah. Damn right, I would go out with a guy and uh, if he's like- oh, I would own it if I was a fireman, it'd be great. Why wouldn't you? A bit of fireman, Sam. Particularly if you, if you do a cool <laughs> job, you know, it's what you chose to do with your life, why wouldn't you? I like, I like policemen. I do. I, I... <laughs> Why has everyone gone silent? The there? arrested fetish. No, I get it. I get it. I but I like the kind of like the, I like the cavalry. But yeah. You call them a bent copper. That's sure. the word. You know, like the ones who a bit dodgy. A bit dodgy, yeah. Oh god, I love that. I've got a real thing about this. <laughs> oh, my, like, I really do. Like a really <laughs> dodgy really policeman. You know, like <laughs> he he like takes me to the side and you know he's like hmm. breaks the well, rules. Yeah, but I haven't broken any rules. Is the yeah. Best yeah. Bit. Uh, sorry, I'm getting into my weird <laughs> fantasy. Um, do you, have you got any um, costumes? Uniforms. Yeah, uniforms. Cavalry. Costume. Cavalry. It's rarer these days. What's but... your one, MJ? Not the nurse. Um, I mean, it's a classic, but I don't know if I have any um, uniform. Armed forces of any kind, actually. Police. It's more of a male thing, I think. Police have got power. What I'm talking about, men have got this thing about women in nurse uniforms. Yeah, but there's, there's only there's all that kinds many. of stuff like. Hmm. Nurses is the only one, really. No, like no, the sexy New York and... female cop. I, really? Is that one? Fire lady, imagine. Mo maybe maybe they're the ones that aren't... <laughs> maybe they're ones that don't really <laughs> exist. Fire proof jackets, fire proof jackets. Yeah, they're normally ones that don't exist. Like, you know, oh, the classic I know what they French chamber maid that doesn't exist um, anymore. The estradesses. Mm -hmm. Men have a big thing about that. No, but no that... it doesn't cut it for you. Well, no, because they're usually now in like a skirt and shirt and a hat and... Mm, you're not no. quite... Okay, fine, you're not a uniform person. No, not particularly. Change the subject quickly before I get into trouble. Um, I have a, uh, a product called the Ten Hook Lead System, which you're both familiar with, and that's helped a lot of guys out there help them with their conversation skills. So I wanted to quickly go through each lead, each hook lead. So first of all, you've got a hook, and that is the. Um, you want to explain it, Dasso? Shall I? No, you, okay, I'll follow on. Because uh, you look like you wanted to no, say no, something. No, 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 just it's my favourite topic. Costumes, it's like I can talk okay. about this more. So uh, a hook is the response that they give you, the reply. So where you're from, the country, the job, which we've spoken about before. And you've got high calibre hooks and low calibre hooks. So a high calibre hook is a country. Low calibre hook is, example, Hadassah. Low calibre hook would be... Names is pretty low. Yeah. Unless they've got a really unusual name. Um, yes, no. Yes, questions. no. These are low. So it depends what you generate. And then you've got a hook lead. So that's what you can go with. And I've got 10, hence 10 hook lead system. Uh, first one is question. You can respond with a question. Second one is opinion. Third one is assumption. Fourth is humor. Five is anecdote. Greatly overlooked. Six is task. Seven is validation. Eight is fact. Nine is challenge. And ten is suggestion. That's ten ways that you can go with anything that someone says. Um, and people yeah. just ask another question. Of course, please. Um, Validation should also be split into positive, positive and, and negative. negative. So it should be the 11 hooks lead system. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's the yeah. upgrade that will do. Ooh, bonus. Um, so I think one of the most powerful ones here, of all of them, and we spoke, we've touched on this, is assumption. Yeah, it's particularly, so particularly Early for Early on, particularly straight away. 
Yeah. But people it. are so scared of assuming things. Yeah. I know, but that's why I always say, you know, we do it with our friends all the time and we don't yeah. have to get the right answer. And these are people we know, so mm. no one's expecting you to have like the right answer with a complete stranger. You just yeah. should be showing the investment. You should show that you're looking, observing, listening. Absolutely. And coming up with something. And it's very spontaneous. I've had a student before once, he went after a girl and said, um, I bet you're in fashion. And she went, no, and walked off. I've and had that when I'm I said, just wearing black and, and, yeah, and I said yeah. why did you say it to her she was wearing jeans you know trainers there was no nothing to say you, you just the first thing that came to your head and he goes yes and I was like right so you have to tailor it you have to look at why specifically someone might look if she was really tall and thin fine you can say you were modeling but no but you've got to be specific I'm talking about in conversation here mm -hmm. So when people, is, people are giving you data or yeah. just like to their body language, that's a great time to assume something. Um, and the detail that you can add is, it's, it's, the more detail you add, the better it is. So people might say in a subject like, I'll give you an example, Mark, um, I, I bet you were a naughty kid at school. You're going to say yes or no. Yeah, I was quite naughty. No, I wasn't. Yeah. But if I want to add some relish to it, I go, you know what, Mark, from speaking to you, I bet you're a really naughty boy at school. But you're the clever naughty. You're the one that got other people into trouble. You know, you're like the one, you never got caught. She's right, I swear. Yes. Now, there's a few things. <laughs> well, I've known you for a long time, so I can, I, I'm very good at reading people, but there's a few things that they can say to you. They can say, she's right. My gosh, she's got supernatural powers. They can say, you're totally wrong. I was nothing like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I say? Really, tell me more. It's leading. That's it. It's leading, Really, Absolutely. tell me more. So if they say, no, you're so off the mark, Kezia, what do I do? I come back with curiosity. Really? I read you completely wrong. Tell me more. That's it. The you don't have to sit there and try and justify why you thought that or anything. But if you add reasons why you thought that, yeah. if you do, if you have some evidence, the girl can turn around and go, yeah, you know what? I can see why you'd think that mm -hmm. and be really happy. Or if they got it, you know, if got it wrong, you know, yeah. or, or vice versa. Oh, oh my God, you picked that up about me. And this leads me to another conversational clickbait. So we know when there's a lull in the conversation, yeah. I call them conversation tri triggers. Mm -hmm. You know, things that you can say when fuck, there's nothing else to say. And this is a kind of form of um, assumption, which is called the middle child. I love that one. So I'll be talking to someone and go, sounds like a really weird question, or assumption, I should say, but... Are you a middle child? That's what I think you are. And then they go, why do you think that? First of all, they either are or they're not. Okay? They'll say, why did you think that? Yes, I am. Why do you think that? No, I'm not. Why do you think that? And then you come up with bullshit. Well, because middle children, um, only children or middle children, whatever you want to say, middle children, are very, um, uh, they're very dynamic and they are very opinionated because they had to stand out. And you come up with all this psycho babble, you know, it's pop psychology. But they love it, people. And everyone has an opinion on it. This is the great thing. Do it at a dinner party. Test it out. Everyone is either an older child, or younger, the twin, whatever, and they've all got an opinion. No, 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 I'm a middle child. We're nothing like that. But it's, yeah, yeah. it's, 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 um, it really does generate a, a hot topic. And it also just it that. Can... And same with star signs. Yeah, it's another thing. Say horoscopes. We do enneagram. Enneagrams. But <laughs> yeah. a lot of people like star signs. You know, even now, women are still into star signs. Are you a Libra? No, I'm not a Libra. What made you say that? Oh, because Libras are like this and that. And then it's, if it's leading again, it's leading. It's wrapping everything up like a nice Christmas present with a bow on it because the more detail it has, the more detail you're going to get back. Again, simple question, simple answer. You lead with that thing. Why you think, like you said, why you think that, why it's true. We said before, um, if I'm going to ask a question, it will always be led with something like, I read this thing, I saw this thing online, my friend did this thing, I think this thing. You know, what do you think? Because I can see that in you or some things. It's not just question, tell me this thing. Which Assumption is, really is a question hard. and people don't realise it. It is, it's just a confirm or deny yeah. of a thing that you think or that you read or that you saw or that you, you heard or something from a friend. It's, firstly, it's so much easier to ask, so it's so much easier to answer, but also they're going to give you a lot more detail because they've specific, already... Specific. Yeah, also. because it's really specific. If you ask a really wide question, what's Australia like? Well, people can give you a nice answer depending on who they are, but... They've, they've got to think of so many things It's like, tell now. me about yourself. God, God, the hardest question If you just said, tell ever. me three things about yourself, people could answer that a lot more easily. And the more you sort Even of though they're restricted. funnel it down, yeah, absolutely. 
it's more art, the it's fun than it is. It's kind of like is. artificial restrictions, isn't it? Yeah, tell me about yourself, because I, I get the impression that blah, 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 because of the way you're dressed or the way you're speaking or the way you're standing or whatever, much, even if you're totally wrong, I think that because of this, and that's why when we're teaching people transition, having the power of observation so that just from the, the way people are dressed, how they're speaking, what they have with them, what's around them, you're gathering all that information so that you're making that process easier for yourself. So that if I don't have any of that and I've got to go with, so what do you do? And it's just the words here with nothing else. Of course I've got to be basic. If I've taken everything in around me and I'm saying, I'm asking that question because of this thing that I see, that thing that I hear, because you've got a tattoo on your wrist of that and I reckon this. Yes, no, she doesn't. But if, you, if you're using the information that you have to inform the question or the, the assumption you're using, cool, the answer's going to be 100 times I think better. this takes us into a much broader topic. Um, and this is one of the main... goes back to the main reasons why I think people run out of things to say in conversations. Yeah, I do want to speak about that. Why, why, is it too why, soon? Should I bring it up later then? Well, I just want to close about the 10 hook lead system. Um, unfortunately, we're running out of time. I think that we need to do another part two yeah. for this because yeah, we've literally that. got the other hook leads that we can go into and each one takes about, well, on my DVDs, each one takes about half an hour to yeah. explain how you can mm. generate all sorts of responses and make impact and connect by using each one of these, like anecdote, task, validation, yeah. challenge, fact, I haven't even spoken about that. Before. We'll do another episode because we don't we don't have time for that. But we will we'll just do for the ten hook lead system another time. But um, get the DVDs and you've got an online version also of that. You can get instant online access to uh, the program. Why are we now? Uh, we have to wrap this up pretty quickly. Why are people sucking at conversation skills? Now I put it down to fucking emojis personally. <laughs> just emojis. That's one. Why are people talking to each other in hieroglyphics? I think yeah, I know. What the fuck I don't. Is going I can't on? read them because someone it's... sent me. I said I don't understand what you're talking about. Can you just speak? And they were just they had all these pictures of people. I said, what does yeah. that mean? Why, yeah, he put you a what? bat. I said, what does that mean? He goes, you're batty. I said, for fuck's sake, it's like how <laughs> children talk to terrible. each other. Why? Why it's like are a people? Cryptic crossword. I know. I'm silly. <laughs> Do you know what? Trying to work it out. Well, why, why are people terrible at conversation? Because yeah. you don't have to do it anymore. Because you're going tick, tick, tick. At the you can curate everything you write. You can be funny, it. 20 emojis. Well, people, voice yeah, messages, people have to this, put a lull that. to get your tone across when you write a text. You have to because people are so Because otherwise go, what do you mean it? by that? Yeah. Explain yourself. <laughs> well, I put lull. I'm sorry, I forgot to write lull. You know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Smiley face. Yeah. Have you seen this new one? It goes like that. I'm fine there's, there's with seeing it. Have you seen this one? There's every emotion. Yeah, someone uses that to me and I don't reply. I said, oh, okay, that one goes mad. Like, what do I know? Yeah, what the fuck do you know? Why don't you write to Just me? Say, I'm have sorry. You seen, have I you do seen not it? know. What do you, what do I know? That one. Oh, there's what every the emotion. You know? Every I possible version of an emotion has Texting emotion is so now. quick now. You just swipe it along <laughs> and you get little lines that join it up. It's like it's not like in the old days where you had to do like A, B, C. C, C. Oh, I've done it wrong. Here's a D, semicolon. D. <laughs> Our dad used to text. you got to press the button four times, my then dad, wait. My dad used to text. And it'd be in capital letters and the space bar would be a plus yeah. between each one. Do you remember? It'd be like... You know? Yeah, because he couldn't work out the space. Yeah, it was so funny. Like that. That's my dad's text but message. That, but that's why. Because he's probably using emojis. Our brother's now. the worst. One. Everyone does. <laughs> Capital letters. Everyone <laughs> does. You know what I mean? But the we're not us three are emoji free. No, do you not? Know Instagram even emoji I, free. Even I used the emoji crime once in a while because people are stupid. Because people take things the wrong way, it does make it clear. Have you used that one yet? I, don't I haven't know. used that one. No, I don't use, use that one. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll use it today. But I'm still using those old fashioned ones with a little like semicolon and the that. bracket. That's what I don't use. I do. I know it's from 2003 or whatever it. it is. But, because, because people don't feel like they have to, because there's a million ways you don't have to. You can go on Tinder, you can do this. That The whole oh, sort of setup is not to do practice. Do you use it? Do you use emojis? With people that do use them, I use them. Ah. Um, so you lower your tone. I just, I try to do you use emojis? Why do you use them? What do, do you use that one? Oh, I don't know this one. This one. It goes. Oh, what do I know? No, that I hate the girl dancing. The Spanish... What's that about? Someone sent me three of them. Oh, they do Spanish dancers. The hooker. Oh, that's hooker. That's a Spanish dancer. I'm a hooker. And I was like, why? Well, I'm talking to you about you know doing a shift or something at work, and it's like. 
<laughs> well, that explains it. Clear that one just smoke signals soon, just communicating yeah. smoke signals. No, it's too definite for people. Okay, so we collectively agree that emojis are like, you know, that. I think in general, I think this is. Uh, emojis is, is the, the beginning or the form. end of Western no, no, society, no, no, well, isn't it? I think emojis. it's the, the final implode, form yeah. of the fact that we've been losing steadily over the years how to communicate our tone or oh, you know text doesn't get the tone across yes well it can perfectly well when you well, read a I book know. but the reason is it's no longer have the you it's know a, the, i'll give you an example okay right. we have to we have to wrap this up we do blame emojis yeah but it's, it's no emojis bring, the final it's bring words back blame. it's the reason why Instagram is more popular than Twitter in terms of Oh yeah, of let's talk to each other in pictures it's now. Pictures. Look at this picture of memes. me. It says a million words. No, it doesn't. It says that you've got a large ass. It's memes. It's everything like, is... The picture says you know, everything. Yeah, you just have to be posing like this at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the bunny ears on. Yeah, that says everything. That's I'm going to finish... It's a I'm going to finish off film scripts. Uh, These are voted the best, most witty film scripts. That's okay. how we're finishing it. And you can... Okay. Yeah. So, All About Eve is my personal favourite. Very good. There is right. no Excellent. wittier script. If anyone wants to learn how to be witty, just watch Eve All About Eve on Ho. repeat. <laughs> just watch it. Brilliant. It's a black and white film. You're going to have to get your emoji brains around that. All but right. It's all black and white. Woody Allen movies. Yep. Yeah. You know why? He uses unapologetic honesty Yeah, he does. Them. Yeah, okay. And women find him attractive. Yeah, I like that. Now, this was the official list, which I don't agree with. Right. Oh. Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. No, Probably one it. of the worst films ever made. No, I liked it, but Robert it's, Downey Jr. Yeah, it's a good it's one. It's not funny. Well, it's not a funny. It's stupid. It's a decent film, but I, I wouldn't call it like in terms of conversation, particularly amazing. This is the official list. Google, according to Google, right. Fear and Loathing in Vegas. Vegas no, it's right. confusing. I, I would not. I saw a I bit of not it. Not enough my, emojis to even explain. Even my, yeah, right? my teenage Johnny Depp obsession couldn't get me to get watch that. Film. Wouldn't wouldn't use it as a conversational. I have no of, idea uh, what that's about. The template. Social Network. Is a very is a beautifully film, written film. It's beautifully written. I turned written. it off because it was so boring. A bunch of people <laughs> you know using Facebook. It's an ex- Justin Timberlake rolling out of bed and looking at his phone. I can't. I, I do love that one. I mean, it's an Aaron Sorkin script, so it's a fantastic. Firstly, you do realise that this is about how Facebook yes, starts. It's, it's beautifully written. It's just a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, it was, but it was the original Facebook, like Face, yeah. face one, Dictionary, or whatever they called it. Or something. I'm going to add one. I'm going to add one to that list, right? The film <laughs> lovers. Face party. Face party. There were so many. Was I would still think about that. Like, MySpace. I loved MySpace. Naked shots. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm gonna sorry. I'm going to add one. I'm going to yes. add one film. Well, to I've got that. one more film. Oh, go on. The importance of being earnest. Very good. It, it's Oscar Wilde. It's a classic. It's Oscar Wilde. I mean, people okay. don't speak like it, but I'm going to add one. Um, if any, it's a bit small film. Simpsons called, is very witty. It's very good. Is this to be funny or to be good at chatting or what? What's what's witty, the list just of? Witty. Mm, okay, witty. No, there was one called Before Sunrise, Before Sunset. That is. Brilliant for if guys like it's about a girl and a guy who meet on a train, spend all day together just talking to each other and getting to know each other. It's really, oh, really, that. really good. I know, it's just oh, I know film closer. Um, yeah, very it's, good script. It's good. It's a play, so it's sort of yeah. That's very what I was going to say. I like it's Lion very witty. Marbo, it's, it's written well, but in terms of um, how I would actually talk to someone, I'm not sure. It's good though. What's yours, Dusty? I would say I like yeah. <laughs> That's your favourite film, not mine. It's not my favourite film. I like um, Lion and Winter, but yes, you're right. It's a play again, so it's it's a medieval setting. No emojis. But the sc- no, there's no emojis in it. Believe it or not. That. But the script is no, just no, it's so it's witty, it's sharp, it's the, it's full of passion. Mm-hmm. This is how people should express themselves, not again, Dancing Girl. <laughs> That's, that's, that's my, that's that's my, my prostitute. One. She is a prostitute. Is she? I'm sure she is. But anyway, that's plus she like the Cavalier. So okay, guys, we have to wrap this up. Um, we'll take this conversation up, right. um, after the cameras are off. Um, yep, check out the website kezia-noble.com. Find out more information about how we can help you improve your conversation skills. We do that on the boot camps. We do it on the seven-day mastery program. You'll work with all of us on both of those events, those courses, I should say. Um, if you can't get to one of our courses, then check out the online course, 10 Hook Lead System. And you can still get it in old, good old-fashioned DVD format. So again, kezia-noble.com. And we sincerely hope to see you on one of our courses. But without further ado, we say goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks Take for having care, me. Take care, guys. Bye.